many people, forest fires have a very bad reputation. Many people see it as a safety issue for homes and development in the area. In the worst case scenarios, homes can actually be damaged and, and, and people can be injured. Following a forest fire, things may look very bleak, very little green growth, lots of burned bark. My name is Ryan Rebozo. I'm the Director of Conservation Science for the Pinelands Preservation Alliance. Communities suppress fires in order to make sure that homes and businesses are protected. Much of the forest that would have burned otherwise is left unburned, which creates a condition where we have lots of additional fuel. And fuel is a term the Forest Fire Service will use to describe how much plant material is available that could potentially burn. So this additional fuel as a result of fire suppression creates a condition where a wildfire or an out of control fire can really spread very quickly. Better forest management techniques can be helpful in preventing massive wildfires from occurring, especially in areas where homes or development can be impacted. Prescribed burns are typically used to reduce that fuel load by burning up some of the leaf litter and uh, biomass from the previous year. We're in a forest that was subject to a particularly intense prescribed burn. This happened in late February, and we are now two months later in late April taking a look at one of the pitch pine trees here that's just beginning to exhibit some of the epicormic growth. With closer inspection, we see that very few of these trees are actually dead. They're beginning to produce new green growth, new needles. These are woody plants in the family that hosts cranberries, blueberries, and huckleberries coming back and growing from the charred ground. We have here turkey beard, one of our rare plants that's coming back again from this fire. This forest is very much alive and in fact benefiting from the fire that occurred here. Wildfires are also beneficial for our animals because our animals are directly related to the forest in which they live and the plant species that are there. They all depend on the diversity of plants and the diversity of habitats that are present. Another important aspect of forest fires is their nutrient cycling abilities. You have a lot of biomass, a lot of growth above ground in these plants. And when they're burned during a fire, some of the nutrients that the plants took from the soil in order to grow are released both into the atmosphere and back into the soil. We're in a forest that burned about two years ago in a spring wildfire. And here we have an example of one of our pitch pine cones. We can see it was burned at least in part here. Most pine cones will open their scales as they mature, releasing seeds. But a smaller percentage will remain sealed, and these are our serotonous cones that open as the heat of the fire allows these scales to release and set free their seeds. When a fire comes through, there's bare soil exposed, which you would really want if you're releasing your seeds to maximize their germination. So living in a fire-prone area has its own unique risks, understanding that fires will naturally occur at some scale and at some return interval. One good practice is limiting the amount of flammable vegetation to being beyond 100 feet from a home or property. Forest fires do play an important role all over the country in creating openings in forests, in recycling nutrients, and helping maintain and maximize plant and animal diversity. 